Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we spent some time going around the Reach, doing some things that I'd gathered up to do since being in Eleutheria. And ended the episode at Trader's Wood. It's time to finally finish the Regent's Grave quest, and I'm really interested in what's going to happen. I mean, it's been a year. We had to wait a year. Uh, first, though, let's go ahead and level up. I'm going to choose Steam and Soot. So I want to get my Veil skill over 75, because that's kind of like the highest skill check. You know, there's, there seems to be like common skill checks when it comes to being able to use items at 25, 50, and 75. So getting Veils to 75 would be nice. But looking at all these things, and none of them actually have Veils as the primary stat. You see how there's uh, this brighter icon on the left of each one, and then two dimmer icons. So the brighter one is the main stat that you get plus five in, and then depending on which one of these options you choose, you get plus three in one of those two other things. So I can't gain a huge amount of veils, but with steam and soot, I can gain five iron and three veils, which is something. Plus it would be nice to hit the 50 iron kind of skill check. I feel like there's some things I've been waiting on uh, having 50 iron for. Oh yeah, the better armor plating, I think was it. So steam and soot. You spend much of your time at the engine yards, watching locomotives being built, repaired, and decommissioned. They were iron behemoths, their bones steel, their breath steam, their innards intricate as a pocket watch. How did you spend your time among them? And I'm going to go with eavesdropping on Skyfair's stories. They boasted loudly of horrors and wonders, and when they thought no one else was listening, they whispered their fears. So I wrote this in Elizabeth's character sheet. When I was trying to make a life for myself with the earnest agitator, I loved to listen to stories of the things out in the frontiers of the sky. I was yearning to see all the things my old life deprived me of. They were terrifying and thrilling. Now I get to experience those stories for myself. Forty-nine iron. So close. Is that the skill, uh, the iron that I have taking into account bonuses? Yes, it is. Okay, Regent's Grave. I forgot the person's name, but remember the person whose body has been inhabited by that spirit thing? I hope they're okay. I did promise somebody from the camp that was their friend, the Somerset camp, uh, that I would keep them safe. I think they're waiting for me in the parting glade, if I remember right. Yeah, the dismal paleographer. He has carried out the tamer's task. This will conclude the story of Traitor's Wood. The paleographer's hair is wild and his eyes are bright. He smiles and raises a hand to hail you. It's calloused and filthy with dried blood. Forgive my appearance. I haven't bathed in months, he sighs. I can't hear her anymore. But for a time I was her instrument, and it worked. Listen, can you hear anything? You cannot. His grin widens. We couldn't tame the whole wood, but could quiet it a little. Another figure emerges from the wood, the feckless theologian. He runs to the paleographer. You leave them alone. Okay, so they are okay then. Thank God. So the... were they called the tamer? The strange thing of bones or something in, in the region's grave. I forgot the fine details of the story, but being called the tamer, um, I think they wanted to tame all the noise in the wood, make it quiet. A searing enigma and a thousand experience. The dismal paleographer has paid the trader's debt. Trader's wood has been tamed. I wonder what that means for like doing an expedition into this place. Is it going to be changed? Uh, let's find a mandrake for the nature reserve. Respite from labor. Let's rest. Reduce our terror. Okay, so are they back at the Somerset camp? No, it's still deserted. So I don't think I can speak with them anymore. The theologian or the paleographer. Right? Yeah. Dang, I wish I was 
longer end, I was, I was hoping to hear more about what happened with them. Shall I try to get a caged catch? I feel like I maybe needed that for something somewhere. Sure. Oh, success. A keen-eyed stoker spies tracks leading into the wood. You follow them. Birds cry out in the canopy ahead of you, startled by something moving. You quicken your pace. Your quarry slows, allowing you to catch up. It stands in a copse of silverwood, a proud stag with its many tined triple crown. Oh, I think I've read this before, but might as well finish. Its majesty does not spare it your bullets. It takes five people to carry it back to your engine. Should I go on an expedition to see if it's changed? Elizabeth is very afraid of the woods. But with them being tamed, maybe it's better. Nah. Elizabeth still definitely would not go. So I'm headed from Trader's Wood over to the Eletheria Transit Relay. And I thought I would take a quick stop back at Regent's Grave, because it's not much of a detour. Just to see if I can talk to that thing again, the tamer or whatever, see if anything's changed. Yeah, can just leave the grave, that's it. Okay. A lot of these stories that I feel like are going to be epic, I, they seem to, like, they feel like they end too soon. Ah, well, I still love this game. I have arrived at the Eleutheria Transit Relay, and right about when I was, I think about here, I realized that I forgot something. I had intended to go pop over to Albion real quick and uh, deliver the Firkins of Red Honey to the mausoleum since I have the prospect for that. At that point, being here and it's all the way across the map, God, that would take a long time. I didn't want to do it, so I'm just going to go back to Eleutheria. The thing is, I have no idea what the hell I'm going to do with the Firkins of Red Honey now. Well, I mean, let's get through for one thing. So I bought seven, even though I only have six slots, just in case I lost some. So let's get rid of one. I forgot what I need to get through here. I know I'll have the stuff, it won't be a problem. Um, ah, right, a savage secret or two candies of dried tea. Yeah, I'll just use the secret. Present myself to customs, this should be no problem. Oh, they don't even check. And let's go. The burrower below is displeased with you. So, am I going to appear at Eagle's Empyrean now, since the other relay is broken? Is that a no? No. Wait, so is this relay just broken when it comes to sending people? It can still receive people? How does that work? Like, what if I try to dock it? What, is, what does it say about going back? Um... Uh, the relay sigils are cracked and worn, the lights are out, the relay station is unmanned, and it seems from the layer of old frost, has been for some time. Can be made to work again? The doors to the control room hang open, you could attempt to operate the machinery yourself. Can I? Nothing. Not a glow, not a twitch. The incomprehensibly complex mechanism is silent and still. There is nothing you can do to repair it. You will not be able to return to the reach from here. Tales are told of Eleutheria in the Reach. Skyfares have returned with rare goods and stories of vast horrors, and almost certainly more recently than this relay went out of commission, there must be another way back. Should I head over to Ackley's? Do they sell fuel? They do sell fuel and supplies, because I'm kind of low on fuel. Okay, well, let's see if we can get there from, like, the back. Explore a little bit of unknown. A 
I still don't know what I'm going to do with this red honey. Maybe I should just sell it back to smugglers. Will they buy it? Uh, ooh, what's that? The Corvidae. My terror's pretty high, 35%. Let's mourn the dead. Reduced it by 5%. A simple ceremony. Whoa. Shards of amber hang in the nearby sky. What is that? It's gorgeous. Oh, requires mining. Dang. Oh, maybe that gives you Navaratine gemstones or something like that. Ooh. way through. Oh. Oh! Um, if I take them out, that's gonna progress the story for the Fortunate Navigator. That was a terrible shot. the navigator show his friend the defeated monster. The navigator is put on a sky suit and retied Alton's wrists and ankles, but he can't put the corpse, uh, put on the corpse without assistance. The navigator floats over to the defeated monster and does a triumphant jig on its remains, <laughs> almost toppling over when he leans to give Alton a better view. For all its grotesqueness, such unbridled delight is contagious. The crew can't resist smiling. When the navigator clambers back inside, he shrugs Alton's body to the floor, then props it against a wall. He unseals his helmet and turns to you. We defeated that! He holds up his hand. Look, I'm shaking! He sighs, suddenly exhausted. Recover sheaves of parchment. Yeah, let's do that. Vision of the heavens and 250 experience. I'm not sure if I've done this before, so let's read this. Your crew lean from the outer hatches with boat hooks and nets, swiping at the fluttering pages like frenzied butterfly catchers. Soon they have accumulated a small pile of parchment, dense with pictographic script. You carry it to your cabin. Alright, let's go speak with them. A new goal. Did you know that King Gassar once wrestled a giant tiger? 
It seems the battle with the monster is already well out of mind. Can you imagine that? Man versus tiger. I've never even seen a tiger. Not a real one. I'd love to see one. We get you Alton, too. He nods towards the corpse, which is propped upright against the wall. It's wearing a top hat adorned with a particularly garish feather. There are no tigers native to the heavens. If you want to see one, you'll have to find a magician. One skilled with mirrors. Perhaps the magician at Pulmere and Plenty's can assist. Hmm. Well, I don't plan on going back there for a while. I <laughs> just came from there. There's the Ackley's music. Look at that bubbling monstrosity in the marsh below. I walked around down there. It didn't go well. New Spite. What a name. Oh. The War of Midnight continues. The distant bellow of Hoyo Toho? tells you that there's another battle taking place in the monastery gates. It'd be easy enough to ignore it, but both sides would likely be grateful for assistance. Help Sigurd Ringbreaker's urchins. She's fighting a losing battle, preserving the monastery. 58% chance of success. Success! A successful route. Ho-yo, to-ho, ho-yo, to-ho, your crew descends on the melee, wielding what weapons you have to hand and a few heavier tools from the engineer's private collection. The ringbreakers take a moment to regroup, before their Valkyrie, Sigrid, leads a fresh charge that leads the attackers battered, bruised, and not a little humiliated at being defeated by children in homemade armor. Their situation improves little as Sigrid orders them stripped of their weapons and march through town in their unmentionables to join their fellow reprobates in the ringbreakers' makeshift brig. Cache of curiosities? What? Uh, where did this come from? Salon's to gossip. Okay. Oh, that's a creepy picture. Patrolling with the ring breakers. That's really creepy looking. You know what this is like? This is like an uncannily photorealistic ghastly. As in the Pokemon ghastly. Looks really weird. A patrol is just leaving, and you're welcome to join it. Once in the poison mists of the swamp, they lower their weapons and begin to play. You quickly find yourself in the middle of a game of hide and seek filled with unusually advanced tactics. Hmm. Remember, I'm still looking for that person that's lost in the swamp. So I can join them or look for tea poachers. Or forage in the swamps. For verdant seeds? Eh, verdant seeds aren't worth much. Let's join the game. Not a game, their leader insists. Strategic training. Your size puts you at a disadvantage against the ring breakers, most of whom are small enough to crawl through hollow tree stumps and hide in the tall marsh grass. It doesn't help that they are far more used to the poison in the air. Nevertheless, they agree that for a grown-up, you aren't entirely rubbish. This is high praise indeed. I don't suppose anybody wants to buy my frickins of red honey. No? Damn. Okay, I'm gonna go get rid of one of these smuggling prospects. The one that uh, they want eight at the mausoleum. <laughs> Let's get rid of that one. 
Uh, now that message stopped popping up saying you you can only have two smuggling prospects at one time. Let's get a port report and all that stuff. So I did everything here, right? Yeah. I remember I wanted to go back into the marshes, but I couldn't until waiting a bit of time. But now it has been enough time. Let's see if there's anything else I want to do, though. Let's sit down with a hookah pipe at the House of Silks to reduce our tear. Costs 10 sovereigns. The cushions are soft, the honeyed incense is sweet. You settle down next to a fellow captain, a tea trader from the Blue Kingdom still smoking through her death mask, and a figure who prefers to keep their identity private. There's little conversation. The incense is strong, and each breath from the hookah only serves to wrap the world in fresh, warm layers of cotton, wool, and half-remembered dreams. Can I do that repeatedly? Yeah, ten sovereigns? To reduce my terror by... How much? 13%? 8%? So it's reducing it by 5% for ten sovereigns. That's totally worth it. Heck yeah. Okay. Let's go into the marsh, shall we? I'm sure it'll go great this time. Okay. What can I do differently so that I don't get totally lost here and don't find the person? I have no idea. Let's continue in. I'm going to skip a lot of this text because most of it we've seen... I know I tried heading north for a long time. That didn't work. I tried following the water currents for a long time. That didn't work. I, cho I chose a random direction quite a bit. That also didn't work. So basically nothing worked and I have no idea what to do. <laughs> um, Your instincts push you in that direction. I remember thinking there might be a, a hint in what to do. But the fact that I think these options jumble. They, they move in their order. They're not always in the same order, and maybe that means something. So, north, water, random. Let's go north. North, water, random. It says your instincts push you in that direction. Let's keep following my instincts. Encounter. Poachers in the night. Oh, right, they're dead. Wounds apparently self-inflicted, and they had eight sovereigns on them. Yeah, now it's different. Now instead of north... Uh... Shit, what was it? North water random? Yeah, now instead of that, it's cling to the tree lines instead of north. Then it's random. Then it's stick to the water. Maybe I just always choose the top one? Cling to the tree lines? Cling to the tree lines. North. Your instincts push you in that direction. Let's follow my instincts. North water random again. Instincts still taking me north. Yeah, now it's the tree lines. Random water instead of tree lines or north water random. Hmm. Gonna keep doing the top one. Cling to the tree lines. Oh, shit! I found something! Uh, let's see, is this new? Ever? No, this is the same, but this is new. Ackley's Garden, you emerge from the mud into a leafy green clearing. Sweet smells compete for your attention. Jasmine, alyssum, rose. Incense and honey. The garden is a piece of Eden in the gray wastes. Green, flourishing, with the sweetness of pollen in the air. 
A few carnivorous plants take a playful nip as you pass, but none have the reach to snag more than a sleeve. A spring under a looming tree offers ice cold and clear water. It washes the fog from your mind as it quenches your thirst. After a few minutes watching the bees buzz between the gem-bright flowers, you begin gathering the garden's bounty. Your arms full of picked flowers, you turn back for the port. They will turn a fine profit from the market's incense vendors. 166 sovereigns. Oh, and that's it. I mean, it's a good thing, but I'm looking for that person. Where's the person? I think I can go back in, though, because I didn't, like, get sick. Nope, never mind. Still blocked. I was just heading to Pan from Aklis. Bought a couple bronze with that they had available as a bargain and some fuel and supplies. And we have Temptation of Red Honey now. Is, is there an option just to, like, hey, let them have it? Because I don't think I need it anymore. Oh, set a watch, 56%. Oh, success. Wasn't expecting that. There's also a couple things to see along the way to Pan. Got a wreck. The Barker. Press open the doors to the hold. Your driver holds your locomotive steady alongside the wreck as your crew take turns at the pry bar. Eventually, the bay doors are sufficiently parted to permit the spryest of you to squeeze through. Soon, they return. And what's this they found? A solid crate. Oh, I don't have space for it, do I? No. <laughs> uh... I guess I'll dump fuel. That's worth the least. Hmm. A lost library. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh god, there's another one. Um, I do have hold space, so I could try to get bronze wood. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Success. Whoa, it's coming at me. Decipher the sigils in its bones before I get hit by one of those things. Have I ever been hit by one of those things before? Oh shit, I just lost five visions of the heavens. The Grievers are not one of Mr. Darwin. Uh, we've seen that before. Yeah, it doesn't actually explain why I just lost five vision of the heavens for a moment of inspiration. I know a moment of inspiration is worth more, but that's a harsh loss. Oh, fucking hell. That actually didn't hurt me? What? in its throat? Uh, yeah, let's do that. I don't want to trade visions of heaven. Success. 50 sovereigns. That's not very good. This thing, this library is still, like, shining, which makes me think I can go into it, but I already did, and it gave me something. It's one of those manuscript things. Yeah, I can't do anything with it. Whoops. God, I can hear it. No, the other ones didn't reach. Whoops.
Oh no. Traded more visions of the heavens. That was the only option for some reason. You do get a good amount of experience for that though. 250. But, you know, I want to have a good amount of everything. I don't want to have just tons of moments of inspiration, but no vision of the heavens. It could be pretty limiting. Never know when you might need something. So in Pan, it's the hour of veracity. When the word eaters are abroad. So what does that mean? Twice, Eleutheria has been turned upside down by storytellers. Now the profession is prohibited in Pan. During the hour of veracity, the word eaters bare their feet, cover their faces with ash, and roam the city, confiscating stories. Oh. I can't do this because, oh, I need 12 crew. Avoid them as you go about your business. 94% chance of success. During the other hours, the word eaters are everyday citizens of Pan, but when the piping permits and their faces are gray with ash, they serve only the halved son of Eleutheria. Yep, the halved son. We know what that is. That's the the one that was left was the king who wars, not the king who speaks. That one was killed. Success. You stay alert as you travel the streets, steering clear of the silent, staring, gray-faced men. Another visitor is less careful. You see the word eaters pin them against a wall and extract their stories with a hook and a spindle. What the fuck? Uh, mm. Back at Pan. I just realized I forgot something else to do in the Reach too. I should have gone to Kirillin to try to purify my soul, get rid of the clear status, so that I can go to Caduceus and they'll accept me. Man, I forgot a lot of things to do there. It's alright though. There's plenty to do here too. I'll end up going back there once I have more things to do. For now, I think this is a good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but there's plenty to explore in Eletheria.